<laughs> Jesus. <laughs> What's good, peeps, and welcome to my channel. I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. Well, Kevin here. Hi, Kevin. And today, we're going to be making an extremely exciting project that I didn't know if I was even going to be able to accomplish. It was very much a learning curve, and so we're not going to be making a square. We're not going to be making a circle. Nope. Then you'll say, we're not talking about this or this. We're talking about this. We're going to be making a live edge canvas. Like, boom. <laughs> so as you can see, the painting actually denotes the size and shape of the canvas. A little bit bigger than life size. What do you guys think? <laughs> now, if you guys wanted to see how I completed this painting, stay tuned to find out. <laughs> And here I'm gonna start by transferring my sketch onto my board. I'm just using an old scrap piece of board because we're gonna be cutting this up anyway and this will be covered in fabric later. So um, as you can see here, I'm just working off that preparatory sketch that I made in Adobe Fresco. It makes it a lot easier to just move things around and plan as I go. So I use this as the basis for what I'm gonna be putting onto my board. Here you can see it's a face with the two owls on either side. And so you can see how I get to move those different objects around and kind of plan for that perfect composition in the end. So what really sucks here is all of the lines that I'm gonna be drawing in and everything will be covered up by fabric and primer and the ending anyway, but I really do need all of this to be sketched on so that I can get that outline where I know I'm gonna be cutting so that everything is proportional and that it matches up to that initial sketch that I created. And now I'm gonna be cutting my board in half. So I'm gonna need two boards because I'm gonna need a face and a backer board for this painting. So I'm just trimming this board up, making sure that I don't get too close to my edge so that I can come back in and clean up that edge in the next step. And then I'm just clamping my board together so that I can start to cut those edges and make sure that this panel isn't gonna move on me. And now I'm just cutting out that object with my jigsaw and I want to make sure that I'm not making too jagged of edges because I'm going to be wrapping this in canvas so I don't want those to be sharp corners that could rip that canvas and that's going to make my life a lot harder too for when I go to wrap this that I'm not going to have to make more cuts than I need to because it's already going to be a pretty complex shape for me to have to wrap this canvas around. And when I get to the end of the section, I just cut all the way through so I can take off of that remnant piece. And then I just put my clamp back on where I need it. And like an idiot, I put it in the wrong spot. So I basically just moved it over so I can continue cutting out my shape. And now I'm just gonna do that same step with cutting off my excess here. But as you can see, I learned this tip in metals class. Instead of just cutting off that edge, I left a little bit of a notch out so that that will give me a great starting point to put my jigsaw through and not get any weird kind of wonky edges because that would actually show through in the final product on this painting. And so I'm just gonna continue to take off that excess, move my clamps, and then I'm just gonna continue by finishing off my shape here. And so now that that is completed, I can move on to my miter saw. And here we're gonna be creating the cross braces that go between the two panels we just cut out. So kind of like a wood sandwich. <laughs> You'll see in the next step that uh, we'll just kind of put these in place to add some structural stability to the painting. And now that we've got our crossbars cut here, we can take off our clamps on our double panels so that we can then move on to sanding. And we're doing this because we don't want our canvas to catch on any of those gross edges. This is just some cheap NDF, so it splinters as you're kind of going and we really wanna get rid of all of that. And this is gonna be covered, so it really doesn't need to be perfect, but we just wanna make sure that we're not gonna get any catches or tears. And along with the face with this, you can see that I've primed on this and kind of used this as a work surface in the past. So we're just trying to make that completely flat because that is what our final product is gonna be laid over. And now I'm just taking my crossbars and I'm starting in the center, working my way out. And I'm putting this in all of the areas that really need some structural support because this wood is a little bit flexible. We don't want it moving around underneath our fabric. So I'm just gonna go in, especially in those flimsy areas 
and add my crossbars. And then I'm gonna be gorilla gluing these in place. And this stuff is great because it expands to like four times the size and then it really shrinks when it dries. So it'll really start to adhere everything together and we'll have a very solid piece in the end. Then I can put my face back on and I can start to try to align this by hand, but I want this to be extremely aligned because we don't want anything to be wonky. We need it to match up perfectly with that back panel and we'll use a board to make that perfectly aligned. And I'm just gonna be clamping my two boards here together so that that will really have some good adherence. And I'm gonna wait for that to dry overnight so that we can then go and move on to our next step. And now that's all dried up, everything looks like it stuck really well and I'm just going to be taking off my clamps here and so then we're going to be transferring that over to our canvas. And I'm just kind of roughing out that size. We're going to be cutting off the excess in the end anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but I want to make sure that I have enough fabric to really wrap and pull around that double panel that we just created. And now the big power tools come out. This is where it gets fun. <laughs> We're gonna be taking our staple gun here and I'm gonna be tacking in one edge. So on a regular canvas, you would just kind of do this exact same kind of a step, but obviously this is a more organic shape and so things will get a little bit tricky here. I'm kind of learning as I'm going, but I'm gonna treat this like I would any other square canvas. So I'm gonna pull that extremely tight and then tack in the opposite side. And now I'll just work my way out, tacking in some more making sure that that fabric is pulling around really nice around our curves. And now I move on to my sides. So these parts aren't actually as difficult as it's gonna be to do that top area because of that extremely harsh 90 degree angle, which was just a bad design <laughs> on my half. But just like Tim Gunn, we're gonna make it work, make it work. Andre, what happened to Andre? But basically, we're gonna do that exact same step that we had did for the top and bottom. So we're gonna pull extremely tight, tacking in those two edges, and we're gonna work our way out. And so in some of these corners, the canvas wanted to buckle. And so what I'm gonna do to compensate for that is actually cut a corner piece in there so that I can overlap and then glue in the end. And that really did work out. It was basically a wild guess that this was gonna work out and it seemed to work. Everything's gonna be painted black too. So that's actually gonna really help to hide any imperfections or any kind of overlapping that we have. And then it's time for me to start cutting off my excess. This definitely would not be good to hang on the wall, probably make it look wonky and we definitely just don't need it. So we're gonna be trimming that up, making that look clean. And then in the ending here, we're gonna be doing another step to really help hide these edges. And you can see here that there are some holes left over from when I cut the angles in, and that's completely fine. We're basically gonna take a paper mache kind of approach to this, and we're gonna start filling in with our remnant pieces of fabric kind of cut to size. And I'm gonna be using wood glue for this. It's basically the same as regular glue, but <laughs> it really did end up working in the end, completely dried and really kind of made a nice clean edge for all of this. And like I said, we're gonna be painting it black so that'll hide a lot of imperfections and any ripples that we have are actually gonna be kind of eliminated when we put our gesso and our primer on this. Um, because primer and paint in general will start to kind of shrink things up and make them a lot tighter. And so I'm just really focusing that glue on all of the edges, making sure everything is kind of tacked down, giving us that nice finished edge in the end. And same with this top half here, so you can see that big gaping hole on the top. <laughs> Basically I cut a strip so that I can do that same process and this will fill in that void and it is the top so you really won't see it as much but just in case the viewer does see this part I really wanted to make sure that that was all finished off and matched everything else in the end. And now with those edges all wrapped up and completed we can start by gessoing our canvas. So this is basically the primer that's going to kind of adhere to our canvas make everything kind of tighten in and give us a nice surface to paint on so that my expensive paint won't be kind of soaking into this canvas. And it'll really just create that nice chalky surface that I'm gonna want for blending and making everything nice and smooth in the end. This is really good for filling holes. And so this is actually really good for those areas that I kind of paper mache earlier. 
And with all of the sides complete, I'm gonna move on to my top half. And with this, I wanna be extremely thorough with not just making a nice surface on this, but actually working that paint into the weaves of the canvas itself so that it penetrates through into the wood. And so this is actually gonna help as kind of a binder for that canvas to sit onto that wood, almost like a glue. And with all this boring stuff basically getting completed, <laughs> now we're gonna start to move on to the most exciting part, which is adding the color and starting to create the artwork. And now I'm uh, starting to draw my figure, so basically starting in with the face for the third time, but it's all good, it's a uh, good practice. And so I'm just trying to make sure that I have everything in a nice good composition. And then I'm gonna start in by just filling in my face here, starting to make things look very three-dimensional. And so here is the part where I'm just gonna add in some music and then we can kind of see the process go. And now I start by roughing out that hair. I definitely don't need to be perfect in this, but I'm just trying to get a little bit of an idea of that three-dimensionality. And so basically I'm just gonna start filling in where that hair will be. And we're gonna come in with a lot more detail after this. So a lot of this actually will be covered up, but we do kind of want to fill this area in. And so we can start to make that object start to make sense. And now that I'm done with the face, I'm gonna start by painting my owls here. So I'm just gonna start by painting a coat of white as kind of a primer to cancel out that turquoise blue color over paint. And then I'm gonna go in and kind of sloppily, <laughs> lazily paint in this gray and white tone so I can start to see that shape kind of round out. And this is gonna save me a lot of paint and a lot of steps in the next step when I start to paint the details in and so I can start to add in my shadows and highlights. And this will actually save me a lot of time by mapping out where these shapes are gonna go. And here I start by painting my background in. So I really wanted this to have the accents of that deep maroon color kind of vibrating against that turquoise color. And so I'm just gonna go around here and start to fill in my background. And the cool part about this is I'm actually filling in the outsides with black to kind of fade that in and kind of blend her out. And it really added a little bit of dimension and it was really cool too. Once I started mixing that maroon color in with the turquoise, it actually started to make kind of a purple color and faded into each other really well. And so I'm just gonna continue by going on into this top half here and transitioning into an even lighter color to just kind of ground that bottom of the painting and kind of draw your eye to the center. And then I'm gonna start by doing another kind of spark of that maroon color on the top here, and that will finish off that background. And now I can start to go in and add my shadows in this hair detail here. So this will really start to kind of uh, round that out, bring that face forward, and add a lot more of the three-dimensional feel to this hair. So basically I'm just going in with my darkest kind of green turquoise color, and then I'm gonna go in with my highlight, and this really starts to transform that hair, make it look glossy, and really start to round out that shape. I really love how this highlight kind of brings out the details in this hair. And then we cannot forget to paint the sides as well. And now I'm gonna start to paint my owl details in here, and the thing that I really had to remind myself is even though these are white owls, they are gonna have actually some really deep low lights to make them really, really pop out and start to kind of mesh in with that face so they don't look like they're just kind of floating there. And basically I'm just gonna go in, and I'm remembering too that I want this to be very textural. I don't want it to be just a flat, very smoothly blended surface so that it looks like feathers and it looks kind of like little hairs poking out. So basically I'm just gonna go in over that kind of sloppy, ugly <laughs> painting that I did earlier and then add in my details. The nice part about actually painting that underpaint is what we call it, is that 
I don't have to completely fill in that shape. I can just go in with my little strokes of white, kind of fill out that shadow color. And then if I do leave some of that background showing through, it's okay because it all will blend in in the end. Now for the final step in this painting, I'm gonna start by adding in my last little details here, the eyes and then filling in the talons too. Um, I wanna to stick with that theme of the pops of maroon color throughout, so I'm gonna make those in that color as well. And now I'm gonna start working on the back of the painting and I'm a big believer in the back looking just as good as the front. And as you saw earlier, we really did kind of uh, mess that backside up. So <laughs> we're basically gonna go over that. I'm gonna lay out my felt and then I'm gonna start tracing this out. And this will give me a good outline to kind of cut around with my fabric scissors. And I'm really loving how vibrant this painting looks against the black and you can see how well those edges turned out in the end. Then with my outline being done, I'm just gonna start by shearing off the edges of this, going a little bit inside of the lines so that none of that felt shows through from the front side. And then with that remnant piece, I'm gonna put that down on the table before putting my painting down because I definitely don't wanna scratch that surface that we just spent all of that time on. So now I'm gonna lay this down, start to fill in this back area with black so that everything kind of meshes in together when we put that black felt panel over the top of this. And now that that's dry, I just put my back felt panel on and then I start tacking in that top edge and I wanted this to be really tight so that it wouldn't gather in any places and I noticed as I was pulling it actually left a little bit of overlap that you would see from the front and so I just had to cut off some of that section and then continue tacking in with my hot glue gun. Now I'm going to start by fixing a wire to the back of this painting so that it gives it something to hang onto on the wall. So I'm going to put my screw in but I'm going to make sure not to go all the way in so that I can wrap this wire around cutting her down to size, and then I'm gonna wrap this counterclockwise so that when I do tighten that screw, it'll actually tighten it and fix it to that board. And then same step on this other side here, so I'm just gonna screw this in, wrap that wire around, I'm gonna trim off the excess, and then screw that into place. And with that being done, we are completely finished with this painting. Thank you for watching and making it to the end of this video. Now if you could, please like, share, and subscribe. I have a few videos coming down the pipe that are extremely exciting. If you wanted to see a few projects that I've created in the past, go and follow the Instagram. Now thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!